Hi, I'm Malcolm McKee, District Commissioner at Leatherhead District Scouts. Today we're going to continue looking at scouting activities you can do at home, and we're going to carry on looking at the Scouts Pioneer Activity Badge. In the badge requirements, it says you must be able to seal ropes safely and look at whipping and splicing ropes. So when talking about cutting and sealing rope, the first thing to think about is what sort of rope it is. There are two main sorts of rope, ones that are made of natural materials like this sisal rope, or plastics like this polypropylene rope. And within those, ropes can be laid in a couple of ways. So these are laid in three strands, where this old climbing rope is braided. And this cord I've got down here is also braided. So what this means for sealing is that any of these plastic ropes, the polypropylene or the climbing rope or the braided rope, you can seal by heating them and the end will fuse together. Whereas this natural fibre rope, it doesn't matter how much you heat it, it won't fuse it together, it will just burn. So we need a different solution for those. Let's start off by looking at what we do to cut the length from this plastic rope and to seal the ends. So I've got a chopping board that I'm cutting down onto to save my desk, and I've also got a sharp knife to do the cutting. Now, one thing you want to think about is, if I just cut this now, then the ends are going to start fraying immediately. So the first thing I'm going to do is before I cut this rope at all, I'm going to mark where I want to cut it and just put a couple of clove hitches around the rope using this short bit of twine. So there's the first one. And there's the second one. put these fairly close together and then cut between them. So when I make the cut it just helps to keep the ends of the rope together. So you can cut rope by sort of putting the knife through, holding it in a loop and drawing it towards yourself, but by cutting down like this it helps to keep the ends really really clean. So I'm just going to just cut through this like I'm cutting through a carrot or another vegetable. There we are, just taking my time. And this is the end that I'm going to seal. To do that, I like to do this with a candle. You can seal a rope with just a match, but it tends to be something you have to hurry if you do that. Whereas if you light a candle, you can hold the rope over the candle and you can take your time. So I'm just going to take the clean cut from that end and hold it over the candle flame. And you don't rush it. If you rush it then it will tend to catch fire or melt into a big blob. You just want to gently heat it. So that the end of the rope becomes fused together. I'm just going to give this a little bit more all the way around the edge. Once that's become fused together, I can take off that clove hitch and you see the, the end of the rope is sealed. It doesn't need support from the clove hitch anymore. If you have a rope made of natural fibre, then you won't be able to melt the end to seal it. So the way of sealing the end is called a whipping. And it's essentially just a series of turns around the rope to bind it tight. So I've, I've put a whipping on the end of this rope and you can see this, is, this bit is really solid and past the whipping it's frayed, so you get a frayed end like that. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to put a whipping on the other end of this plastic rope that I sealed. I sealed the first end with heat, I'm going to seal the, second, the other end with the whipping. So to do this, I'm going to need another length of this twine. The 
whipping I'm going to show you is called the simple whipping and it's a really straightforward elegant way of sealing the end of a rope. I'm just going to leave this clove hitch in place while I tie the whipping slightly further up the rope. The first thing you need to do is make a loop in the whipping twine like this and lie it along the edge of the rope where you want the whipping. So you can see I've got the loop going that way a short end sticking out there and a long end over the rope. So what I'm going to do is start making turns with this longer end. And as I make the first couple of turns and pull it tight, you can see what's happening. So I've got the short end sticking out there, the loop over there, and I can really start putting a bit of pressure on these turns now. Binding it round. And after I've got a whipping that's about as wide as the rope is thick, this end that I've been putting around the rope, I can feed through that loop. I then pull the other side, pull this end, until that becomes tight. Like that. Now this is the real elegant bit. You don't want that knot sticking out the side. So if you pull it even further, you pull the knot underneath the whipping. So now I've positioned the knot underneath the whipping in the middle. I can just trim these other two ends of the whipping twine. like that, and the whipping becomes neat. At that point, I can recut the, the rope pretty close to the whipping. And this, uh, this end can be allowed to fray up, but the whipping will hold this tight. We also have to look at splicing ropes. So what is a splicing? A splicing is essentially just weaving the rope back against itself. And you can do this for a number of reasons. In this case, I've done what's called a back splice, which creates a permanent end on the rope. Now you can leave it just as an end to the rope, or you can do like I've done here, and back splice around a ring like this, which you can use with another bit of metal work to make a, the end of a basic dog lead. At the other, the other end of this rope, I've done an eye splice. So again, you're splicing the rope back on itself, and this time to create a loop in the rope. So why would you use a splice rather than a knot? Well, it's, it's more elegant, it's more permanent, and it keeps the strength of the rope. A knot will always weaken the rope slightly. So if you're thinking of rigging a boat or rigging a ship, or doing anything decorative in the house, then a splice is just a really, a really nice, sweet way of doing it. To get started with splicing, you'll probably want to start with a back splice because they're the easiest to learn first. So I've taken the end of my plastic rope and I'm going to put a back splice in this. The first thing I'm going to do is just tease apart that clove hitch that I've put in the rope and move it down. and then tighten it up again. So I'm then going to carefully undo these strands of rope. Now you want to try and keep them together as three separate strands as much as possible. And so I'm going to use a little bit of tape as soon as I've got them slightly unwound, just to try and keep them together. So this is just standard electrician's tape. 
you can use any sort of type really. But this just ensures that you're able to work with the three strands of rope and it doesn't end up making a mess. There we are. So I've got the three strands of rope and now I can just keep carefully unwinding those. And Actually I think I'll just make a little bit longer. So I've got three really good strands to work with. And the clove hitch is still there keeping the rope together where I don't want it to unwind any further. Like that. The first thing to do is to put in the end of this rope what's called a crown knot. So I'm going to work back against the, uh, the lay of the rope and this is a bit like that game where everyone sits on each other's lap in a circle. So for each of these three strands of rope you're going to want to bend it over and put it underneath the next strand and then bend that one over and put it underneath the next strand and bend that one over and put it under the first strand. So by doing that three times you get like a little triangle in the end of the rope and when you tighten that, it forms what's called a crown knot. I'm just going to keep tightening this until that crown knot is quite secure. Now actually, if you had no other way of securing the end of the rope, just tying a crown knot in it would be a good start because that will hold itself together. So with that crown knot in place I can remove the little bit of twine with the clove hitch and then carry on working with my back splice. This is the sort of stuff that is really, really difficult to demonstrate down the scout hut to large numbers of people. And it just takes a bit of time to learn at your, at your house. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick any one of these three strands and then working back around the lay of the rope, you see how it naturally falls over that next strand, like this. So I'm going to put it over that strand and then under the next one. Now what a lot of people do is they use a tool called a Swedish fid. And I, I've got a Swedish fid here. And this is really useful because when you open the rope up, you can insert your Swedish fid and then use it to feed the rope through. But I'm going to assume you haven't got one of these. So I'm, I'm going to do this all without one. A fid will just help you to keep the, keep the result nice and clean and tidy. So as I say, this strand here it goes over the next strand and under the one after, like this. So I'm then working around in a circle, I find the next one, it goes over that strand and under the next one. So I'm just going to open the rope up a bit, feed it through. It's just a little bit of effort to keep everything nice and clean and tidy. And then to find the third one, so the third one is now at the top, it goes over this and you can often get a bit confused because the strand you're aiming for is hiding under this strand you've just pushed through. So there it is there. So I'm just going to push that through there. So it really pays to take your time, keep the rope nice and tight, tighten it all the way around as we go through. So 
So there we are, I've put one weave through on each of the three strands now. So now I can just carry on and do a second. So again, this strand here, I'm working in that direction, it goes over this first one and then under the second one. So I'm just going to open this up so I can get this through. The second one goes over that strand and under the next one. And then the third one again, it goes over the strand that's next to it and you just have to find the strand that's just hiding slightly out of the way and push it through. I've talked before about remembering people by the techniques that they teach you. And this one's quite personal to me. It was my grandfather that taught me how to splice ropes. And my grandfather was um, was a fisherman. He, he came from the Isle of Skye. And uh, he was one of 12 brothers. Um, quite a poor family. And, uh, and he went off to join the Navy when he was 14. And in the Second World War, uh, he was part of the Merchant Navy and uh, and did the North Atlantic convoys. Um, and I just remember when I was uh, when I was a scout age, he taught me how to how to do this sort of rope work. And so I can't really do this without thinking of him. So I've done a few turns now, um, and that's a that's a perfectly adequate back splice. The thing you can do now is remove the tape, like this. And you don't need to be in too much of a hurry to trim these ends up. If you kind of roll the roll the splice in your hands then these will start to fluff up a bit and it'll look like a natural end to the rope. So this has been a whistle stop tour through the rope work elements you need for the Scout Pioneer badge. We've looked at sealing a plastic rope using heat, sealing any rope using a whipping like this and as an example of a splice, a back splice, just to uh, finish off the end of a rope in a really permanent and strong way. So I realise these are techniques that take a bit of practice and there's something you can practice at home. If you've got your hands on any sort of cheap plastic nylon rope like this, um, you can take the time to learn these and uh, when you start working with more expensive natural fibre rope, you'll have that technique really sorted. So thanks for joining me. Until next time, stay safe and keep on scouting. <laughs>